For as many of you as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus warns the disciples, and so warns you too, that there will be a time that comes when anyone who kills you will think that he's doing God a favor. And we heard on Sunday why. Because they hated Jesus without cause first. Jesus knows that everybody wants to cut him out because they want to live in their own little synagogue or church without him their little la-la land where they can talk about love and do so without him. Love this and love that. All you need is love, but not the love of Jesus. And Jesus, meanwhile, knows that there's one particular kind of hate that's really deep in the heart. And it's the one that's finally going to affect the disciples and everyone who hears the gospel. So that's So it comes down to what's really happening at Pentecost. What's going down at Pentecost is not just that the Holy Spirit is coming. It's why the Spirit is coming. And why, and the way the Holy Spirit is coming is because, well, we don't want Jesus. And we were going to get rid of Jesus at any cost. And Jesus says, it's not just a couple of people. It's not just the rulers of the synagogue who are going to do this but it's actually the whole world that's set against him and thus against you that will do this. This is not picking out any particular religion that says this, that hates Jesus. It's not picking out what we would call a particular race of people either. Jesus knows what he's up against and he sets it straight out. I am up against the world right here and I also know why they hate me. I know why the salvation of the world had to be fulfilled in this particular way. So then, who is the spirit that Jesus sends? You just sang about him, the paraclete, or the advocate, the comforter, the consoler. But that word paraclete does have a particular courtroom meaning, a judicial meaning. I like to translate it as the spirit is the defense attorney, the one who defends you from prosecution. It's not just a nickname. This isn't your old pal, the Holy Spirit, over there. The advocate refers to what the Holy Spirit does for you, which is the key thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person who's actually doing something, actually helping you in your need, advocating for you. Because you've got two problems. You've got other people hating you for what you say about Christ, and then, of course, you yourself, according to the flesh, don't like Christ either. So he says it, you will hate him. But then comes in the Holy Spirit, who's going to be the helper, the advocate, the counselor, the comforter to you, which is probably the most helpful thing for you. Remember, in the Lutheran tradition especially, we commonly refer to the way the gospel works in us as bringing comfort to our conscience. What we used to call, what the Bible used to call the heart comfort to the heart, the comfort to our conscience. And the conscience, prior to the comfort of the gospel, is troubled, not at rest, not at peace. According to your flesh, you have a troubled conscience, and that troubled conscience now is a problem that it can't resolve and can't get over. Actually requires God's doing. The Holy Spirit actually has to come and give comfort to the conscience which otherwise is now eating itself alive and cannot free itself. It wants to be free, it wants to be happy, but it cannot do it. The heart is restless until it finds its rest in Jesus. And so in comes the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit knows that the problem for you is not that you have a dream, but that you can't quite get there, or know the things that would make you happy. And you can't get enough of them or even any of the ideas about what or why people fall short in life and what they really need. None of this is known to you. It's all opaque. We're blind by nature. 
So the real problem is that the Holy Spirit knows you have to get over your hate for Jesus. This is what actually has to happen to you. This is the comfort the Holy Spirit has to provide. And thanks be to God, for most of us, the Spirit is given to us when we're infants, so we never know this kind of hatred. And you will not have to to, you will not have the comfort of a true and certain conscience until you know truly and certainly what Jesus Christ is actually saying to you. In comes the Spirit for that. Not only does he raise Jesus on the third day, but you also have the 50 days and now the coming of the Holy Spirit who's actually going to tell you what Jesus thinks of you. Because unless the Spirit tells you, you wouldn't know. That's what he's doing by his word and by the gifts. That's what the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost is all about. And that's the only way he can bring comfort to an otherwise troubled conscience that is constantly aware that there's a problem that it has with Jesus and suspects that Jesus has a problem with you too. So here comes the Holy Spirit again, going to come to you and to resolve that over and over. And it's the Spirit who sends you a preacher so that you can wrap yourself up in Jesus' word that the preacher gives to comfort you. All this is a way of saying that the Holy Spirit has a work, and without the Spirit, you would be left in your trespasses and sins. He has a thing to do, and that thing is to come to you in the the present, in the moment, in a specific way, with a preacher, using a word. And that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. You'll hear it on Sunday when Peter has a word to preach, and it convicts the people, and the people beg him, what must we do to be saved? And he gives them that word of comfort. Repent, believe the gospel, be baptized. The Holy Spirit is going to do something new for you that's never happened before, just as he did on Pentecost. He takes what has been spoken by Christ already and declares it to you in the now. Of course, the Holy Spirit won't make something up. He will only declare to you what Christ has already said. He will take what is Christ's and give it to you. That's what Jesus said today. Like a big brother who robs from his little brother, the Holy Spirit has gone over and taken what's Jesus's so he can give it to you. But of course, this is what Jesus wants and what the Holy Spirit has come to do for you. Everything that the Father says about Jesus, the Holy Spirit takes and applies to you. And if he doesn't do this for you, then you would be left in your trespasses and sins. That is your hatred of Jesus. And you would be without comfort because the only thing you would have left is the question, why do I hate Christ? What did he do that's so problematic about him? The only thing you'd be left with is the law. Thou shalt and thou shalt not. Just you and the law sitting in your church talking about love this, love that, all you need is love and then finding out that you fall short every day, every moment. Without the Holy Spirit giving you all that belongs to Jesus, without the Holy Spirit sending you a preacher, without the Holy Spirit speaking a specific word to you, you would look, around, look at Jesus and just wonder what Jesus actually thinks of you, or just be uncertain of Jesus, or maybe even, as I said, hate him, because you'd still be under the law. And he would be saying to you what the law says to you. And then you'd be quite mad at him because you would think that you've actually done something that deserves the sort of punishment that you have, the suffering and pain that you have. Or perhaps you would even think that you deserve some kind of award for all your law keeping and your loving, which of course is false too and a false sort of comfort for your conscience. But Jesus has actually taken the law from you. And so the Holy Spirit comes to give you a new word, never heard before, a new song, as Isaiah calls it, a word that cannot be found anywhere else, in any other faith, in any other word but the word of the Scripture, which is the gospel word coming from the mouth of the preacher, specifically saying something to you now. You are forgiven in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit declares that you are forgiven, and thereby the Spirit sets free your conscience to not hate Jesus anymore. The Holy Spirit sets you free from the law so you don't have to worry about loving your neighbor because now you know there's no reward in it for you. You don't have to worry about it. The same goes for loving God with your whole body, mind, and spirit, and soul. You don't have to worry about that anymore either. 
Instead, the Holy Spirit sends a preacher and he forgives you and sets you free to love Christ. Free from the law, free from fear about what the world will do to you when you talk about Jesus. Free from the fear of death because, here's the kicker, it's the Holy Spirit who will raise your dead body because when he sees you, the baptized dead, he sees only Christ and cannot resist raising you, which means he can't resist the resurrection on the last day for you either. All this is the work of the Spirit for you, setting you free to love without fear, not under compulsion, under the law, but rather by the gospel. And without the Spirit speaking, you would not know Christ nor him. But thanks be to God, he has revealed himself to you this day, and every day you hear those words, you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.